Hey guys, welcome back to the Care Tutoring YouTube channel. My name is TL and today I'm going to be covering circles and everything you need to know about them for the SAT. So as always, I've left the link in the description below for Care Tutoring. So if you are interested in receiving free tutoring for SAT, ACT, IB, GSE, A levels, and general high school topics, feel free to sign up using the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing we're going to cover is the idea of central and inscribed angles. So a central angle is going to be formed when two radii pass through the center of the circle. So if we have this point, the center point O, and we have this point A here, and we have this point B here, we see that OA goes from that line, goes from the center of the circle to the end point. So OA and OB are radii. And they also, the gap between them also forms an angle. So we're going to say that angle AOB is a central angle. So here's a definition. Central angles are formed by two radii, and they pass through the center of the circle. So now the central angle is going to be the gap that's in between them. So the angle measure is actually just going to be this over here. Um, so inscribed angles are going to be somewhat similar to central angles. In this case, what we have here is a point C that extends through throughout the entire circle. It doesn't touch the center. So in this case, CA and CB are chords. Angle ACB is an inscribed angle. So here's the definition. Inscribed angles are formed by two chords of a circle and the angles actually, the inscribed angle is going to be the gap between them. So what is their relationship? Let's say this angle is 80. The inscribed angle would just be half of that. That would be 40 degrees. Uh, you just need to know that central angles go through the center of the circle. Inscribed angles go through chords, the gaps between the chords and that central angles are always two times the angle measure of inscribed angles. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Let me just highlight that. There we go. So let's go on with the idea of a radius. So the radius is going to be a line that extends from the center of the circle to the end point of the circle. So if I were to get out my ruler and draw this straight line right here, OA would be a radius, OB would be a radius. Oh, and let me just convert my ruler. OB would be a radius, and OC would be a radius also. So OA, OB, and OC are radii. because they pass through the center of the circle. Point O, I'm just going to say point O because that's going to be our center. Point O and extend to the end of the circle. And by end of the circle, I just mean they extend outwards from the center all the way to where the circle reaches. Okay, next what we have is diameter. So diameter is just going to be a straight line that goes straight through the center of the circle. So in this case, assume that BC, assume that BC is perfectly straight. Diameter is going to be two times radius measure. And BC is going to be our diameter. Let me just redraw that with a different color. So here we have in pink, that's going to be our di diameter. And here we have in black, that's going to be our radius. And a radius can extend, it just doesn't have to be one spot, it could be anywhere on this circle, as long as it goes through the center and extends outward to the circle. Now we talk about tangent lines. So in this case, what we need to know in terms of, of SAT, 
tangent lines are lines that touch the circle in only one spot. So in this case, there would actually be a perpendicular line that's formed and right angles. Two right angles are present as a result of that. So all you need to know is that tangent lines touch the circle at only one point and form right angles perpendicular line okay so that's all you need to know about tangents also on the SAT they might ask you to find the slope of the tangent line so let me show you how to do that real quick so if they give you a point on the circle and let me just erase this tangent line because that would have a slope of undefined and that would not be good so if we were to draw a tangent line in terms of C let me grab out my ruler so if C is the only point at which this line touches it then it would qualify as a tangent line which it is okay so now let's say point C let's say point O is at the origin point O zero zero and let's say point C is three two three negative two since it's under the origin so in this case point C the slope between point O to point C is going to be the Y the difference in the Y's uh, over the difference in the X so negative two minus zero three minus zero that'd be negative two thirds this line has a slope of negative two thirds however since this line is perpendicular what we could do is just find a neg negative reciprocal and that's just going to give us the slope so we negate this so that's going to be two thirds and the reciprocal means we flip it over so three over two is going to be the slope of the tangent line ec okay so that's all we need to know in terms of tangents now let's cover area and circumference in your SAT reference table, you have two equations that tell you how to find area and circumference. Usually they might ask you to solve for a radius. So if you were to change, if you were given the area and you want to find a radius, you would go from area is equal to pi r squared, divide by pi over pi is equal to r squared, and take the square root r. So that's how you find a radius if you're given the area. And on the other hand, circumference, just do some algebra. If you wanted to find some radius, if they give you some circumference, it's just going to be r is equal to c over 2 pi. So here are the two equations that might become useful um, when it comes time for the SAT. Um, but I just want you to understand how to find the radius from these two formulas, just in case they ask that. Next, what we're going to talk about is degrees to radians. So if they give you an angle measure in degrees, the only way you would convert that is using this formula uh, without a calculator, of course. So it would be x degrees times pi over 180. And to do the opposite, you would get x rad times 180 over pi. And let me show you a trick to kind of remember this. So if you want to convert into radians, you always put the pi on top. And if you want to convert to degrees, then you put the 180 on top. Okay, degrees, radians. It's not much to go over. Um, they don't really ask as much on the SAT, but it might be useful in some questions. So lastly, what we have is arc length, arc measure, and sector area. So if you remember sector area, that's just going to be pi over 360 degrees, pi r squared, you multiply those two, and that's how you get the sector area, if it is in degrees. Sometimes they might give you the angle measure in radians, so in that case, what you have to do is use this formula. So, in the first one, what you're doing with this uh, data over 360 is you're finding how much of the circle the central angle actually takes up and you're just multiplying by the area of the circle. And that way you're just forming a fraction of the circle that's covered by the central angle and multiplying by area. 
So let me explain a little bit where you get this formula from. If you take this original equation and bring it down here, you get theta over 2 pi, which is equivalent to 360 in this case, times pi r squared, and you cancel out the pi's. And now you just multiply. So that'd be theta r squared over 2, otherwise known as 1 half theta r squared. Okay, so lastly, what we have left is arc measure and arc length. Arc measure is just going to be the same as the central angle. So if this had a central angle of pi over 3, which is equivalent to 60 degrees, then these would have pi over 3, pi over 3, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. So despite red, the red uh, arc, or the arc of the larger circle being clearly larger than the smaller circle, they're just going to have the same arc measure. However, the arc length is what's going to be actually the difference between these two. So how we measure arc length is going to be SOAR. That's how I remember it. Uh, the arc length is determined by the data in radians times the radius. So let's say this had a radius of 5 and a radius of 5. So the radius of the bigger circle, big circle, is going to be 10. And radius of the small one is equal to 5. So let's plug this into the equation and see what we get. So s is equal to pi over 3 times 10. Small, let's go pi over 3 times 5, and we get 5 pi over 3, 10 pi over 3. That would be 10.47. And that would be 5.23-ish. So as you can see, the arc of the smaller circle is going to be approximately half of that of the big circle. And sometimes they might ask this on SAT. It's rare. But just in case it pops up, I just want you guys to be prepared. So that's all I have for today. If you guys enjoyed content like this, be sure to comment down below. I'll be sure to make more videos like this covering SAT math. And have a nice day.